Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Academy Show. I'm your host Mo Stewart and I'm joined as ever by our Academy expert Matt Addison. And it's time, we've spoken many times during the season about pre-season and how important this period will be. Well, it has finally arrived where every other kid of their age are making plans for holidays and festivals. These boys are already back at pre-season training started on Monday. And uh, alongside their managers, Barry Lutus and Mark Bridge Wilkinson, there was another interested observer at pre-season training, Matt. Pep Linders is already down there observing, which kind of reinforces the point we've been making all this time, how important not only the coaches, but for the players, this pre-season spirit really is. Yeah, 100%. I think it's uh, it's a big statement, isn't it? I remember seeing him last year going down, and I'm pretty sure he took a, a few of the, the sessions, obviously, it's good for the players. It's good for the coaches as well. I think to to work with with someone like that to to kind of see how they take control of of those. But yeah, what an opportunity for for some of those young players that have come back the the under eighteens and under twenty or under twenty ones as they are now. They've they've changed it now, haven't they? For for the coming season. But um, but yeah, for for all of of those young players to have Jurgen Klopp's assistant there with them, it's it's just a massive massive window of opportunity to show what you can do, isn't it? It is, and I mean. He's such an enthusiastic character that almost like one little word of encouragement for them, you can just almost see them growing in stature. But we're going to be analysing some of the players who we think are going to be primed to make a big impact across this preseason. We're going to be looking at it from the perspective of those who we are looking to think about real senior opportunities. Then we're going to have those who are maybe in the mix, maybe are going to be able to make an unexpected leap. And then those who are maybe just at the start of this journey. So we're going to start with the more uh, expectant players and work our way down. But before we even get to those, there is a special case that we kind of need to cover. Uh, Jay Spearing, former Liverpool player Jay Spearing, made 55 appearances for the first team between 2009 and 2012. He's back at the club officially on the playing and coaching staff. I believe he's on the list as a player for the under-23s, but as a coach predominantly for the under 18s now this has raised some eyebrows and i mean some people have made a few jokes about it but i think this is something we're going to see a lot more of we have seen it in other clubs players who have experience of the academy uh, run and know exactly what it takes on and off the field to make it to the first team coming in and giving that experience to these younger kids i think it's fantastic matt what do you think yeah, I, I just don't see how it can be a bad thing, to be honest. I mean, we, we did a, a video on it for the Blood Red channel, and I, I just had a little watch of that before, just to remind myself of, of the details before we recorded this, and had a little look at the comment section, and there was a few kind of people who were questioning him why, why it was going to happen, and, and what was the point of it, and is this the, the stellar marquee midfield signing that everyone had been waiting for, and all the usual sarcasm, but I, I just think it, it's a bit of a no-brainer, to be honest. He's someone that I wouldn't imagine he's going to play that much. You mentioned, you know, some of the other clubs who've, who've done this. Paul McShane, I think, wasn't it, at Manchester United who played for their under-23s last season. But I think he only made four or five league appearances for them. His role predominantly is going to be coaching and that, that's going to be the same for, for Jay. I think Monday to Friday, he's going to be in with the, the under-18s doing their sessions, working with Mark Bridge Wilkinson. You know, they're, they're going to learn loads from someone who's played in all four divisions in England. He's got a wealth of experience. He's done it right at the top. But, you know, we, we've said it before, not all of these players in the academy are going to make it for Liverpool. Not all of them are going to be making 55 appearances for, for the senior team. The majority of them are going to end up at, at other bits of, of football at, at various levels, whether that's, you know, in this country or abroad. It's it's still, you know, broadly the, the same kind of experiences that, that Jay has had. So I just think it's invaluable. He will get a few games here and there. I know a lot of people have already suggest that he might get the odd Carabao Cup game for the senior team. I think there'd have to be a, a pretty big injury crisis for that mm. to be the case. But listen, for, for me, it's it, it's something that he is obviously well thought of at the academy, but also it's it, it just makes sense in terms of, you know, the, the experience he's got. Why, why would you not want to bring that back in? And I think that's pretty much what Alex Inglethorpe said himself. You know, you've got someone available who's been doing, I think, a few bits over the last couple of seasons whilst he's been at Tranmere in and around the academy. To, to bring him in on a full-time basis, I just think is is an absolute no-brainer. Well, I think the seed was possibly planted when the, the experience of uh, Paul Glatzel, when he was away at Tranmere and had suffered that big injury. And the Spearing was kind of like a mentor to him during that period of time and kind of it helped him through that. So that probably was what gave them the idea. But 
talking about the Carabao Cup thing, I think it raises an interesting point because there are some people who have looked at it and thought that maybe that he will be uh, standing in the way or maybe blocking the pathway of some of the other young players by taking a spot. But it's complete opposite, really. It's as you say, he's opening up opportunities for these kids and telling them things that maybe the coaches don't necessarily know from the player's perspective when you're trying to make it and things that coaches are looking for, uh, just just the little hints that maybe come, that don't necessarily stand out in the moment but become invaluable over time. Yeah, and I mean, he's not going to get in the way of, of the minutes. As I say, he's only played at, well, Paul McShane at United has only played a, a small number of games. I think it's it's going to be the case of if Leighton Clarkson is still at Liverpool next season, for example, it's not going to be Jay Spearing keeping him out of the team. There's going to be, you know, sensible decisions made around who it's best for those minutes to, to go to. And yeah, the, the experience doesn't have to, to kind of be all of, of the bigger things. It, it could be those little details. It, you know, Mark, Mark Bridge Wilkinson has, has played at lower levels of the game and, and has played at, at certain clubs uh, around England. But, you know, that, that's not to say that he's got the same experiences as Jay. I think the more, the more different characters, the more different people of, of different ages and people who've, who've played, obviously, for Liverpool as well. There's there's so many different elements of this that, that just makes sense. So, yeah, even if it is only, you know, one or two players that he really has an impact on, it's it's automatically just worth it for, for those two alone. Definitely. And even if they get sick of hearing about that time he played against Real Madrid, I'm sure <laughs> the, the good will still outweigh the bad when it comes to his learning experience. So let's look at some of the guys who are going to be potentially gunning for the first team. Now, there was two in particular who got first team action last season who are looking to get a bigger taste of it this time. Uh, I want to start with Tyler Morton because obviously midfield's been a rather large talking point within the senior side in terms of numbers, I'll be sure, and the potential for an injury crisis to put Liverpool in a really dangerous situation. We saw that that was how Tyler got his minutes last season in the first team. There was, I believe it was COVID as well as a couple of injuries. We got him some big games, including against Spurs. He's going to be looking to kick on now. Do you think within this period of um, pre-season, he's going to be someone who's looking to maybe start as many games as possible or is it just going to be about the training sessions and proving that he can actually keep up with the elite players? Yeah, it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think the first thing I'd say is that anyone that's only seen him playing for Liverpool's first team hasn't seen the full kind of level of, of his abilities and his skill set. I think he's only really played as a number six, hasn't he? He's struggled a little bit in those games, but let's not write him off on the basis no. of Harry Kane and Jung Min Son managed to get the better of him. I mean, that, that can happen to you know someone who's 10 years older and that is their genuine position as well. I think he's, he's much better further up the pitch. But I think it'd be interesting next season for him in terms of does he stay at Liverpool? Because I know there's, there's a lot of, of conversations at the moment of, you know, Bellingham and do they want one more midfielder and I don't think that's going to happen but even even though that isn't going to happen in this summer transfer window you're still looking at it and going well the Carabao Cup team does that does that even have Tyler Morton in I think there's only one round of the Carabao Cup maybe two rounds before the, the World Cup you are looking at it and thinking is is there going to be enough minutes for him even with you know maybe maybe most people wanting another senior midfielder to be added so possibility perhaps of, of a loan for him might make a little bit more sense but I don't know mm. there, there's a lot of ability there still to, to be unlocked and I really I really rate him as a player I think I think people will be surprised if they've only seen him a couple of times for the senior team I think they'll be surprised in pre-season at just what kind of a player he is as much as anything else I think that's fair isn't it because they are, like I say that performance I think it was against Norwich in the Carabao Cup where he came on for Curtis Jones and that was the first time he played as that sixth role and because of the impressive way he went about that it was almost like that became his role in lots of people's eyes so preseason can be a reset like you say we get to see him in different positions with the way that the Liverpool first team in makeup is changing it might be that there are different positions within the pitch different formations of Liverpool work that actually might suit him better. So we might see him coming into the thinking a little bit more, particularly for the period post-World Cup when some of the players, I know it's only probably going to be Fabinho and Henderson of the main crew who are going to be going to the World Cup, but there might still be some opportunities in the in the games afterwards where people are still trying to get back to speed. 
Yeah, exactly. And it's just about being in the right place at the right time to, to capitalise on that. I think for, for all of these players that we're going to talk about, it's an important time in pre-season, isn't it? To be able to just kind of show that you are ready to, to do that. I don't think it's really the case that Tyler could go into next season or, or anyone else could go into next season with an expectation of how many games they're going to start or how many minutes they're going to play. It's basically just going to be a, a, a case by case, week by week. If there's enough injuries or if someone gets suspended or, you know, whatever it might be, if COVID becomes a thing again in, in the Premier League and there's there's loads of players missing, you've got to be ready to, to take that next mm. step when you get the chance. And I think that's, that's the big thing for him. That's the big thing for Kate Gordon as well, who's another who kind of falls into this category. There will be opportunities. There's not going to be many of them. So when they do pop up, you've got to take them. Mm. The thing with Gordon that I think is interesting is that there are one forward has come in and three have left. So just on a pure numbers selection basis, it feels like there might well be more opportunities. So he might be coming into this preseason thinking that he's got a real chance to actually get some serious minutes this season. And we can't forget as well that for a lot of the second half of last season, he was injured. I mean, he played against Arsenal, didn't he, in the Carabao Cup. He had a couple of opportunities, but I do think he would have had probably one or two more. He certainly would have played a lot more for the under-23s than what he ended up doing. He kind of fell off the radar a little bit purely because he was out injured with a couple of different knocks and, and wasn't mm -hmm. able to play in these games. So if he stays fit for the entire season, you can kind of see him maybe playing the, the Origi role in the Carabao Cup. You'd imagine that's where Fabio Cavallio is going to be bedded in. Mm -hmm. I think there's there's definitely a situation where I can see a, an Oxlade-Chamberlain, Cade Gordon and Fabio Cavallio front three in a Carabao Cup against a, a League Two team. And to be honest, that's that that's probably the reason why Minamino and Origi have moved on and Liverpool are not going to mm -hmm. buy anybody else because, you know, you, you've got to give these players opportunities. And I don't think if Cade Gordon was to play in one of those matches, I don't think you'd be too concerned, to be fair. No, I mean, I think that sounds very exciting. Just hearing you say that, it's like, oh, yeah. I'd I, I, I like to see what that looks like. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? You need to keep um, that development part going. It's not just about giving minutes to people who aren't going to get them in either, either competitions just to keep the squad happy. It's about, like you say, giving these kids space to develop and to grow. And we get on to the next group of players, and it's a little bit more of a difficult scenario for them because some of them may well be suited to a whole season away playing football, senior football away somewhere. Some of them may well be to the kind of players where you think, well, we might need to keep them around in case of injuries and stuff like that. So I'm thinking of the likes of uh, Mateusz Mazielowski, Leighton Clarkson, who we've already mentioned, Max Waltman, Malcolm Freyendorf. These are guys who maybe have clubs looking at them in terms of, well, maybe we can take them away on loan. And it might be how they perform in this preseason that maybe decides that. Yeah, I think it's it's an interesting time for a number of them. I mean, Leighton Clarkson obviously went out on loan last year. First half of the season at Blackburn didn't work. There's an opportunity maybe for one or two of, of, of the minutes that maybe someone like Tyler Morton is eyeing up. Perhaps you could see Leighton maybe getting them. Obviously, he's played in, in the Champions League for Liverpool a couple of seasons ago. He's He's had certain opportunities here and there, but... I think it's it's probably more likely that he would go out on loan. It's just a case of where where is that loan? Everyone thought that Harvey Elliott worked really well at Blackburn, so Leighton probably would would find the same thing. But it, it just completely changed the situation, the way that they played, the the formation, the the number of players they had in his position. It just didn't quite work. So it's not always as easy as just oh yeah, go out on loan. It, it has to be to to the right team, the right kind of manager that is going to nurture these players, which I think is is really, really difficult. So it'd be interesting to see kind of, of what happens with him. Mateusz Musilowski is one that, that people will know as well. I mean, had a decent season in terms of, of numbers, I think 10 goals in 26 games last season. Had stepped up as well to, to the 23, I think the season before we kind of main, mainly been with the 18s. So to kind of get those numbers as well as having stepped up, I think is, is impressive from him. But again, kind of similar to, to Kate Gordon, had a couple of different injuries. I think he got a knock. I think it was against Burnley, if, if memory serves me right. And off the back of that, he, he tried to come back a little bit too soon, got another knock, and it kind of kept him out a little bit longer. He's one of those that I think he, he turns 19 before the end of, of this calendar year. So he's kind of getting to that point where you think, is, is he is he going to get a chance for Liverpool at senior level? Probably not when you look at the options in the forward areas, but is there a, a potential for him to go out on loan somewhere? 
whether that's in England, whether that be abroad, I'm not too sure. But I think that there is, there's probably another season for him at under 21s this season. Um, but you know, moving forwards, I think there's there's got to be a, a decision made somewhere along the line of of where can can Liverpool send him, where can he take that next step? Because I think particularly particularly in the forward areas for Liverpool, I think you can maybe make the case for for a midfielder or a defender, but. Mateusz Musielowski getting minutes in that front three ahead of all of the players they've got and Kate Gordon. I think that's a bit of a tough mm. ask at this moment in time. And I think when you're talking about forward players, particularly creative players who may well try to do things high risk and it doesn't always come off, I think when you're trying to develop a player like that and you're sending them away to another club, it's even more important that it's the right club because you don't want them to get in a situation where with whatever fans that he's been on loan to, they start to get on his back if it's not working out or the manager doesn't quite believe in playing that way. So it's a very, very, very tricky thing. And one other thing I think about the championship, particularly with loans, is that there's such volatility from year to year, such change from year to year. We mentioned Blackburn there. Like, it was a very different Blackburn side just from top to bottom between the one that Harvey Elliott experienced and the one that Leighton Clarkson experienced. So trying to think about when the best place to send these kids are, you really do have to reassess every team almost every single year. Yeah, and it, it, it's sometimes impossible to judge it. I think that was the case, certainly, with Leighton Clarks. And you'd look at, at Blackburn and go, well, the players haven't changed that much. The manager is the same. Everything appears to be the same. Their aims for the season were the same, but the team played in a completely different way. And mm -hmm. there's not really any way of, of knowing that. So... I don't know, with, with some of these players, I mean, James Balagizi is another one that I wanted to mention of kind of, he's got all of the talent, he's got all of the, the little bits, but I think he's one of those players that has to fit into a team that really works around him. I think he struggles a little bit when you kind of plug him into a position that he's not really quite used to, or mm -hmm. maybe if there's one or two injuries around him, he doesn't quite look as effective. I think a couple of times last season, Mark Bridge Wilkinson tried to play him as a kind of a double pivot in, in a 4-2-3-1 didn't particularly work. He doesn't doesn't quite fit that kind of more rigid system where he's got to do a bit more of, of the defensive stuff. I think with him, he's, he's very much a player that you've got to find an opportunity for him to go out and play as a number eight in a 4-3-3. But also yeah. you've got to be in a dominant team that's going to be more possession-based, which is not necessarily easy in the championship to find that. You know, physically as well, is, is he quite ready to go into to that league? Of course, the further down the leagues you go in terms of, you know, League One, League Two are, are even more physical again and maybe don't play in the, the kind of way that, that Liverpool would play in terms of the systems, the, the playing through the, the thirds of, of the pitch. It, it does tend to be a little bit back to front without wanting to, to be too stereotypical of, of the lower leagues. I mean, it, it's really, really difficult. I, I wonder almost with, with him, with Musilovsky as well, maybe a move abroad somewhere does make a little bit more sense where where that would be i'm not too sure but maybe there's there's a low move where you can maybe go say to to holland perhaps where it's it is a bit more technical it's it's maybe a bit more similar to the way that liverpool play but you've kind of got that opportunity to to play a style which probably suits these players a little bit more as well i think you know there's, there's lots of them that physically they're not quite ready to go and, and play in the championship but probably technically they are but but also just in terms of just just purely that the, the kind of football that you play in in a Liverpool academy team is is probably not the same as I don't know Huddersfield in in the middle of the Championship or whatever it might be. No, but it might be the same as a, a Porto, a Sporting Lisbon. I do wonder about Portugal because we tend to be spending a lot of time there. We've got a lot of relationships with a lot of clubs over there. So, and if you think about some of the players who've come through. At an earlier age, some of them are less physically statured players. I think it was Jao Felix straight away. Players have been able to develop in that league and thrive without getting booted off the ball. So maybe that's what, something we'll see in the future. Now, some of the other players, there's some people who are starting to make a name for themselves or who have made a name for themselves over the course of the last season. Three names who we pretty much constantly mentioned, uh, Stefan Pacetic, Bobby Clark and Oakley Cannonier. Those three are all going to be keenly watched during preseason, And I want to throw another couple in at the, as well. Two players who are currently playing for England in the under-19 Euros. Uh, Luke Chambers, who's done quite well in some of the games. And Jarrell Conser, who's probably been one of England's stars of the tournament. Scored the winning goal in the semi-final to get them through. I, I wonder about him in particular, how much of 
this kind of good work, this goodwill and uh, uh, the motivation that he's gained from doing so well from England, how he's going to carry that into a pre-season campaign and whether that can help him can maybe move up a level. Even though centre-halves, we tend to have quite a few good ones of those at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing I'd say is, is Billy Cometti has moved out on loan, hasn't he? Austria, Vienna, I think it was that, that he ended up. I think it's certainly fair to say that Jarell has, has moved ahead of him in the pecking order, which only a couple of years ago, Liverpool were really, really talking up. Cometti was kind of the reason why they hadn't gone out and replaced Dan Lovren was because they had him coming through and they yeah. really fancied him. And obviously, we all know how that ended up working out, not particularly well. But I think with, with Jarell, obviously taking a, a starring role for England. I wonder whether that will lead to a little bit of interest. There should be interest in him anyway, because he's a really good player and, and has been captain in Liverpool at, at youth level. But I think that might be might be a bit of a trigger for maybe one or two clubs to, to take a look at him. You look at the success of, of Sepp Vandenberg over the, the last 18 months as he's been out with, obviously, Preston in the Championship. Again, a, a completely different way to, to what Liverpool play. He ended up playing at wing back for a time. He ended up playing in a, a back three at a time, which I don't think is, well, I would imagine is probably not something that Liverpool will ever do under Jurgen Klopp. It's not something that these players are going to get used to. But I think physically, just to, to go to the championship, prove yourself, learn how to, to play the game in in, in proper in, in proper footballing sort of terms rather than youth level academy football. I think that will be that will be the, the next step really for Jarrell, whether that's this summer, whether that's next summer, I think there's there's got to be a loan spell to, to kind of test the waters and, and see where he's at because I think he's getting to the point now where he's kind of developed to, to such an extent at youth level that you kind of think he's there or thereabouts. It, it's just a case of, of can he take that next step? Whether that would be enough to, to get him a regular role at, at Liverpool, I, I, I doubt. I think, you know, for, for centre-backs, it's, it's going to be very, very hard to, to make this Liverpool team when you look at, you know, the, the quality that's ahead of them. But... Yeah, there's certainly a, a career somewhere for, for him and I think a loan would be would be a logical next step. Mm, definitely. Now, uh, to go back to uh, Bobby Clark and Oakley Cannon here in particular, now these are two guys, so as I mentioned, we've spoken about them pretty much in every show with good reason, uh, but they are still currently within the Andre team, so there is clearly the chance for them to progress up to the 23s at the stage as opposed to necessarily going out on loan. Do you think that's in their future or do you think that there might be a chance that one of them is a as you say a club comes in with an interesting offer to take them away on loan i think it's probably a little bit too soon um i, I really really like bobby clark every time i've, I've watched him I, I just i just he's one of those players that i am drawn to he's, he's kind of yeah. that player that can play in in any one of, of the attacking positions he's probably a number 10 if you asked him that's probably his best position but He's a bit sort of Fabio Cavallo like in that he can play in a few of, of those roles. Scored 13 times last season as well, which you know for his, his debut season at Liverpool, I think is is impressive from that kind of position. So I think he's probably the one that's that's slightly further ahead, but he is still is still very young. And I'm not quite sure it's it's going to be quite yet that he makes that next step. I think that the 23s will be will be the the kind of aim for, for him or 21s. I've got to get out of the habit of calling it 23s. It's, it's changed, hasn't it? it the, 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 the next step for him really is his 21s to, to try and, and get himself into to that into that kind of, of team on a regular basis similar really to, to what Mateusz Musilowski did last summer I think that will be will be the aim I'd expect Bobby to, to probably go on on pre-season with the senior team he's one that you know we've we've spoken about in terms of, of Pep Linders having talked him up and, and talked him up um, and, and understandably so rightly so he's, he's exactly what Liverpool are, are looking for and is probably the one that they've got their eye on next, really, after Cade Gordon, he's he's kind of in that in that same sort of category, I would say. Oakley Cannonier is, is slightly different. I think 41 goals last season, you can't really look past that. You look at those numbers, you kind of struggle to, to question him, but I just think physically he's just not quite ready to, to go out on loan yet. I think even, even the 21s next season might be a little bit of a struggle for him, just in terms of, of what we've seen so far. I mean, look, it, it can click. Maybe this summer he's had a big growth spurt and he's been in the gym yeah. and he suddenly looks a, a completely different player at the start of next season. But I think just in terms of what I've seen from him last season, looks brilliant for the 18s. But then you put him into the youth league, he looks a little bit lost at certain times. I would I would struggle to, to kind of, of see him fitting in perfectly into a, a loan system. Obviously, mm -hmm. the, the, further, the further down you go, the... Uh, 
the kind of more physical it gets, as we said before. So I'd be surprised if if that was the, the logical next step for him, really. Yeah, that makes sense. Although it's funny, he's the kind of guy who I can see coming into a few preseason games, maybe getting a goal here and there, and then suddenly there's a lot of talk about it. That's what happens with goal scorers, man. It's like it only takes a couple of goals and suddenly everyone's projecting wild things and theories into the future for them. So I think we could, oh, you're probably right. That I mean, you are probably right. That is probably the best way. And I think the clubs, uh, the club will see it similarly. But uh, yeah, I just fancy it might just take one goal and suddenly we'll be seeing some talk about Ogi in the first team. But yeah. before, yeah, no, so just just quickly on that, I mean, the, the one the one thing you don't want to do is rush these players. I think yeah. we sometimes we see Harvey Elliott, Kay Gordon, all these players coming through at sixteen and think, oh, if you if you've not made it by the time you're eighteen, then that's you finished. I mean, I, I did a piece on Musilovsky earlier in the week, and all the replies to that on Twitter were kind of, what he, he's nearly nineteen, oh, get him out on loan, get him, move him on, he, he's not going to make it type thing. I mean, that, that that isn't necessarily the case. I think. Right. Obviously, if if you are Harvey Elliott and you're an exceptional case, that's obviously a decent thing to, to have under your belt. But for Oakley, he's still he's got a couple of years. He could then go out on loan. He could then sort of take the Harry Kane route of doing a couple yeah. of bits and and then coming back. It's it's not out of the question. No, and that's the interesting thing to remember, isn't it? Because obviously, a club like Liverpool are going to occasionally have the exceptions to the rules. These kind of fantastic players, because we are looking for them, we are scouting them. But that doesn't necessarily mean to say that we are going to have 12 or 14 of them. That's just not the way it works in youth football. Even if you think that you've got 10 or 12 who look like they might, the chances are they won't all. So, like you say, to try and judge everybody by the exceptional one standards is still a little bit uh, unfair, I think. And, And I don't think we'll be doing that here at this show. I'm pretty sure the coaches won't be doing that the same. So, as you say a little bit of a pinch of salt with these young boys um before we wrap up we should talk about the two new boys who come into the system ben doe and uh trent cohen doherty now obviously ben was hoping to be featuring at the under 19s euros uh but he got injured back in late april do we know his situation yet how much how ready he's going to be I'm not I'm not aware of it at this moment in time. I think that is something that we'll kind of we will learn at some point in the future. I'm not sure Liverpool have, have officially confirmed it, to be honest. I, I think he has himself, but mm-hmm. it, it's one of those that we know is is definitely gonna happen. It's one that we'll certainly keep an eye on this summer. But yeah, obviously the, the injury wasn't ideal for him in terms of, of the Euros, but you know, such a, a highly rated player. I'd I'd imagine we'll we'll hear something of him at some point in preseason. I'd imagine it will just be with the uh, the academy team for for the time being. I, I wouldn't imagine that he's one that would go straight into first team preseason. But I mean, you never know. He is he is very much a, a highly rated player and obviously played for Celtic's first team already a couple of times. So it's not completely you know it's not completely ruled out in my mind. But yeah, there there, there will be a progression plan with him. But I suppose. The injury is is obviously bad enough to have kept him out of that tournament, and that probably suggests he's he's probably not quite ready to to come back and and hit the ground running. But we'll see. He's certainly certainly a highly rated player. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and I think we're in a situation where we Liverpool don't need to take any risks with anyone. And yes, he might well be excited to get started and all of those things at his new club, but the club have been doing this long enough to know that you absolutely have to take as much care as possible with young players when they're coming back from injury, even if their enthusiasm might tell you something differently. Uh, with Trent Cohen Doherty, uh, he's another one that we've spoken in previous shows. He's an exciting uh, wide forward, potentially. Um, where do you see him fitting in? Do you think he's... Because he's still, I believe, he's only 15, so the under-18s would be probably quite a big jump for him. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting one. Again, this is one that, that hasn't been confirmed by Liverpool, but his former coach over in Ireland has confirmed that it's going to happen and, and we kind of knew that that was going to be the case anyway. So again, that is that is one that's, that's going to get done. I mean, my guess would be that it would be similar to Callum Scanlon, who Liverpool signed about 18 months or so ago from Birmingham for about half a million. But you kind of thought the fact that they'd spent that kind of money on him, that would mean he would go into to the under-18s, even though he was only 15. But... They played him, I think, for, for six, maybe even 12 months in the, the under-16s. He had a kind of season to bed in there, away from the spotlight, obviously, the, the, the regulations around kind of reporting on players of that age group and, and that kind of thing means that 
you can kind of just get on with your game, settle into life at Liverpool without the likes of, of me and you sat here on podcasts talking about how brilliant he is and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, for, for people to, to go away and, and write about him all the time probably isn't the ideal thing at that age. So I think there's there's a decent chance that he'll start with the under-16s, but I wouldn't imagine it'd be that long until he stepped up to, to the under-18s. Obviously, he's another one of those that's played a bit of senior football, is coming through the system in Ireland and has done really well. I think he's played for the under-17s for, for them already. So he's already kind of playing ahead of his age group from from what I've seen looks looks fairly physically well developed for, for a 15 year old I don't think it's one of those where he's going to struggle massively to begin with obviously Liverpool really do think that he's a, a highly rated talent and from the, the bits of him that I've seen you can kind of see why that is I think even he himself did an interview with the, the Irish um, FA's media channels and, and kind of said yeah my, my two best things are dribbling and speed and I think you know <laughs> that's that's going to get everyone excited yeah i'll take those thank you very much <laughs> now the thing that i've noticed most we're talking about all this there's still so much that's up in the air i mean these are all great players with the potential to do great things but they're still at the beginning of their journey there's still so much excitement to see how they develop and with this pre-season in general like we say this is such an important time for Pep Linders, for Jurgen Klopp in particular, the way that they uh, try to set up their teams to, to last the whole season. But to be able to make an impact at this point, you can bring yourself forward in the pecking order. You can put your head above the parapet and it can really make a difference. So I'm really excited to see what we see with the preseason. We've got, I believe there's going to be six games in this preseason. I'm not sure how and where they're going to fit them all in, but apparently there's going to be six games this preseason. So we've got plenty of opportunities to watch all of these fellas and see which ones do start to make a name for themselves. Matt, I'm excited about the new season already. Hopefully you are too. Thanks for joining me on this journey here, mate. 